my name's Ed Zabinski from Grand Rapids. Uh, I am one of the founders of one of the companies that's here down the hall, uh, Rapids Brewing Company, and I was asked to help facilitate this session with Garrett. Uh, Garrett Lampa of yep. Lampa Manufacturing, Lampa Manufacturing yep. in Power, Minnesota. Yep. And uh, this is an informal session, as you know now. But uh, we'll start with I love Garrett to say a few words about the business. Yep. I'll prompt a few questions, and we'll want to make sure we have time for you to ask questions too. So. Okay. So Lampa Manufacturing is a small uh, family-owned multi-generational company. So we're located in Tower, Minnesota. My great grandpa Richard Lampa started making uh, sauna stoves as what we would call now maybe a side hustle. Uh, that's kind of <laughs> today's terminology, but that was uh, back in the 1930s. So if you came to our facility in Tower, you would actually see one of the first five that he made is actually right when you kind of walk in over there. So it's pretty cool to see. Uh, and then, so he was developing that locally in Tower and in the Embarrass region for many years. Uh, and then my grandpa Herbie, who was a longtime county commissioner, the mayor of Tower, uh, longtime teacher, and my dad, Daryl Lampa, uh, in the mid-1970s, they uh, were operating a creamery, basically like a dairy in Tower, and they converted that into what we would say like a, a makesmith or makeshift blacksmith shop. And so that's kind of what the operation was like. It definitely wasn't full-blown manufacturing. I mean, the layout was terrible. The, <laughs> I mean, just, you know, I mean, it just really, the structure on the back end, you know, just from converting in and stuff over there, uh, you know, it, it allowed us to make, you know, my dad to develop amazing products out of there. We uh, manufacture the cleanest burning wood furnace ever tested by the EPA. And, uh, you know, we're known, you know, locally and uh, basically across the country now for our wood burning sauna stoves, the Kuma brand. You know, the name was actually given to us by Tommy Rukavina, who is, uh, you know, a longtime politician up north. Uh, he worked with my dad in the early 80s. I actually, Ida had sent me something, his daughter Ida, who now, you know, is the head of the IRRRB, she had sent me uh, a notarized thing that my grandpa and my dad made him sign when they were developing stuff back in the early 80s. She sent it to me a couple weeks ago. So I got a chuckle out of that, seeing that they were, uh, that's something that I probably don't even do now. And this, so they were already that forward thinking back. You know, sure. it, was, it was January 1980. So uh, when my dad then, when they started developing our wood furnace in the late 70s uh, and the sauna stove at the same time, they basically operated out of there for 40 some years, kind of structured the same way, which is, uh, I wouldn't recommend waiting that long to scale your business. Uh, that was probably a little longer, but I do recommend patience, you know, having the right product. Uh, you know, in the right marketplace and really making it bulletproof before you start going across the country. Because I'll tell you, you know, we, we've made plenty of mistakes out there, even though we have great products. But when you ship a 500 pound sauna stove to, you know, Alberta, Canada, and it was supposed to go to Edmonton or something like, you run into problems. And so like when you don't have everything dialed in and, uh, <laughs> and so that's why it's just important. Like any of the entrepreneurs out there learning and, and creating systems on the back end to really make things work, I think is, is a really good way to go. Uh, and then now we got a new facility in Tower in 2019. We moved in uh, towards the end of that year. And like many are aware of, you know, COVID started a few months later. So we were operating my dad and maybe two or three other employees with him for those 40 years. And all of a sudden now we're five times bigger, <laughs> you know, four years later, doing this all through COVID and it's been, you know, very challenging, especially in our industry with the manufacturing, like we didn't know what we were paying for steel prices. <laughs> we were selling stoves before we even had the steel. And so like, if, if it could go wrong, it probably did. But, uh, <laughs> you know, navigating through that, you know, super challenging. Uh, but that kind of goes into, you know, where we're, you know, where we're, what we've been able to do and, and get out today. And now this last year, I've really been focusing on restructuring, uh, like where we want to be in the future moving forward from a product development standpoint. So we've developed one new wood burning sauna stove. It's a gasification sauna stove. Uh, it's, it's probably 25, 30% more efficient than our current one. And our current one is more efficient than anything else that I've seen out there. And the same thing from an emission standpoint. So it's basically 
a gasification sauna stove using wow. the same technology in our wood burning furnace outside of the electronic controls. So we have vapor tubing and the stuff on the inside. So it's like kind of looks like a space shuttle in there. <laughs> well, I kind of joke when a lot of people refer to sauna stoves as like a campfire stove, you kind of are like a bonfire where this is, you know, taking wood burning in a sauna to a whole new level. Uh, and then we have two new electric stoves as well we're working on. So, you know, I'm kind of really excited to get these things out there, but you know, very, it's been very challenging as well. So I grew up in Ely and, uh, I knew I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Ely, and mm -hmm. Ely's not a not a big town. Yeah. Tower Sedan is even smaller. How do you how do you find and retain the the employees that help you do what you do? Well, you know, and this is uh, what one of the things that I'm the proudest of is because uh, <clears throat> you know my dad always said the couple of people that work with him were always great. You know, he had good employees, but you know I you know oversaw. Uh, uh, I was a director of hospitality at a resort casino for, you know, 17 years. And so I, you know, I learned a lot about management. I learned a lot about having great employees that you, you know, your core employees taking care of them. And so I knew what kind of a structure I wanted to set up if I was going to try to be an attempt doing this in tower, yeah. the right way of what I feel is the right way to operate a business, a manufacturing business, you know, and <laughs> the employees, it all starts with them. You know, like you have to, I, I was really, I want to create the culture that I wanted, that I thought could be successful in our community. So what people have to understand is like, hey, my painter in there, I went to preschool with him. We went, when you go to preschool with a kid and you're kind of going through the whole, you know, like when I was in seventh, you know, you're sixth grade with them. You're not just in one class with them. You're in the same class with these guys every day or gals every day. And so my, uh, the guy that's creating back there right next to the painter, he's two years younger than me. So my welders are two years older. Like we, we, I know all these guys, I know their families, you know? And so that's the stuff that I take the pride in, you know, in our community, like, Hey, I want to do it just not for us, but you know, to be successful for the whole community. And sure. so, you know, with my grandpa just had the civic center named after him a couple years ago. So, you know, seeing those little touches in our community is a, it's a pretty cool thing. So, you know, now, you know, how we did that, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I can elaborate on that a little bit. And it's just like, you know, I flexibility, you know, it, it's super important that, you know, employees are able to have a good work life balance. And so like, I'm maybe not the best at taking care of it, you know, staying on top of tracking attendance and all that stuff, because I don't need to be right now. If that becomes a problem, believe me, I will be. One of my things is like, don't mistake kindness for weakness for me because I know how good I am to a lot of the employees or at least like I know realistically how good it is compared to a lot of the other jobs out right. there. Or I know what I've, you know, when they've come to me for something that's been wrong, I know I've, how I've handled it for them. So don't, but don't take that the wrong way. Be the opposite way and think I'm going to get walked over because like I can go the other way pretty quick. Just when you factor it in, because you have to, you have to walk that balance. And so sometimes you have to do that with each one of the employees. So they understand, you know, where you're going for. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm super comfortable now. Unlike 20 years ago, I could go grab any one of my employees and go pull them in by myself. I'm not afraid to do that, but that happens from experience. And so that's something that I highly recommend you know entrepreneurs coming up or anything like that is like develop the relationships with your employees like that's it or if it's not you developing it make sure someone is developing the relationships over there with them you know whether it's your manager or your supervisor or whatever it is because that's how you get the commitment from them the employees you want them to love your product and love what they're doing and so yeah, the money is great, but I'll tell you what, we can't compete with the mines in Northern Minnesota from a dollar standpoint. And I get people that come over there instead of going to the mines, not everyone, you know, per yeah. se, but people that want that. The other thing goes to like the, the 20, hindsight 2020, probably the best thing we did coming out of COVID was go to a, a four day production work week, Monday through Thursday, day shift for all these people, 10 hours a day. 10 hours a day. Yep. They, they get to work 10 hours a day. Now when we're busy, they can come in and work Fridays if they want for overtime, but it's not mandatory typically, you know? And so yeah. like that has been a big thing because a lot of those, uh, employees, they, they like, maybe if it's a side job that they want to be doing or a business that they want to be developing, they have the ability to do that on their own time if they want. 
It's not forced to because I'm trying to provide a job that doesn't necessarily make them do that, but it gives them the option to do something. Because So a lot of them will do that then, you know what I mean? Whether it's a family business they're working on the side or some other stuff that they, or, or family stuff that they have going on. Kids, you know, hockey, basketball, baseball, whatever it is. Whatever they want to do, I want to make sure that they're able to do that within reason. So Garrett, uh, before we open it up for questions, as you look ahead to the next three, five years, what do you what do you what worries you what keeps you up at night about what might be ahead of for us in the next three to five years well you know up by us you know a lot of it's mining related obviously because you know if mining isn't going well you know that that's definitely a trickle down in our in our communities uh and that can really you know have effect on the whole uh, iron range but that the one thing is we're not you know when my dad was doing this 75 percent of our business was probably pickup and now 75 percent of it is ship out so it's not as important directly to us but when so we're market has so our market has expanded sure. but it's still really locally supported and you know from an employment perspective and right. stuff so it's uh you know obviously having the right employees is is awesome you know, one of the things that I'm the most proud of, though, is I've lost one employee in a manufacturing facility in the last year. And this employee was a great employee, you know, like, uh, but he was also, he was working for us with his internship when he was going to school for welding. Oh. So it was like, I knew he wanted to get on at the mines and stuff like that. And I was willing to, you know, and I'm not saying he'll ever work for us again. He was great as he transitioned out of there. And so, you know, I'm really proud that, hey, we have one less person working for us than we did at this time last year. Like, not too many manufacturing facilities are going to say that in, in, in towns. And so, like, I'm super proud of that. You know, when Governor Wallace came over there, he was just like, he had said when he was leaving that he he could tell the pride that the employees took in their jobs and how much they liked the product. So hearing that kind of stuff was also awesome. You know, so getting the employees to buy into your product and really be a part of the business. I mean, we would not be where we're at right now in Tower without having that. And that ha allows me to plan for the future as well. Like we've, you know, started developing these other products right now and we have two saunas on site right now. We've, we never had a sauna on site before. I run a sauna on site every single day over there, you know, and so I get, this is probably the best thing we ever did from a sauna perspective. Customers come over there, they feel the heat. If they're remotely interested in a sauna stove, you know, and if they come over and if, if I if I give them the tour of one of my employees shows them around and they see the production in the back and like they feel part of this, like they there's a really good chance that if they were really in the market for a sauna stove, they're going to buy one. You're going to see the difference when you touch our product, when you see the quality that goes into it, when you see the people making them. Like that's a big thing, and so it's so awesome now seeing people that I gave tours to two years ago, a year ago come back in with their sauna in the process and now going through the purchasing. And so that's something that like, hey, it, it didn't associate dollars with it when I was doing it initially from the tour, but I, I'm telling you, like, that's the kind of stuff that pays off for a company like us in the long run. Like, because then I have the relationship with them. So they then build their sound and they send me pictures of this. And then I'm putting it on our social media, seeing by someone in Idaho or sure. uh, we do a lot of business out to Maine, Massachusetts area. So I would say 40% of our furnace sales go out to the East Coast. Really? And so that's a lot of hardwood out there. Yeah. And so you like, but you know, when your dad, my dad, when he was doing it, like he was making 80 sauna stoves a year and probably 40 furnaces for 40 years. Well, you don't really get a lot of word of mouth when there's <laughs> only, you know, that many going out. And so, you know, when I came on, on the back end for my grandpa, when he got sick in 2007, that's what I focused on. Just get share. I knew we had the best sauna stove. I knew we had the best furnace, but it's like, how do you get that information out there? You know, with no money, you know? And so that's really kind of when social media was starting. And so I just did it organically. And you know, five years ago was really when it started showing more. Like, hey, you start going from 80 to, you know, I mean, we did over 600 sound stoves a couple of years ago. So it was like, that's pretty cool to see, you know, organically without having a significant amount of advertising dollars. Sure. And now, we're, now I'm trying to get the, you know, spend more on advertising to develop it even better. And so like, we finally got to that point where we can start looking at those, but that wasn't an option for a long time. Sure. You know. Are there questions for Justin here? We can talk some more. Justin's my cousin, so we got that confused earlier. Garrett, it's okay. It's, Garrett. it's okay. <laughs> you, you knew Justin from up in Ely, so. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Any questions from Garrett? Go ahead. So, so you mentioned, obviously, you're a multi generation mm -hmm. business. Did you know that you were going to be coming back into the company? No, it, 
Honestly, when my dad was doing this when I was in high school, I wanted nothing to do with it. Like, if you just saw the working conditions that he went through and the environment and stuff, like, I knew the time he put into this on the back end. Like, believe me, this is not happening without my dad. Like, there's no way I would do what he did to develop this thing with, you know, no money and that kind of stuff. Like, so that's where, you know, I take more of the pride in it like that. Because, yeah, I had no desire to do that at all. And uh, I will say, though, that when I did move back in, you know, 2004-ish, when I, you know, took over the resort, uh, you know, took over the resort on the back end over at Fortune Bay, like, uh, you know, I developed a really good relationship with my dad, though, too, through this. And, you know, I wouldn't say it was, you know, like that when I was in high school with him, you know, so that's definitely been a good thing. Uh, but I, you know, it would, I wouldn't be in this position if we wouldn't have got the new building and stuff like that. Like I was definitely very involved in the process on the back end to make sure that stuff happened with me eventually planning to transition over. But I also stayed an extra year at Fortune Bay when COVID hit than I wanted to. Like when the EPA regulations went into effect, I, <laughs> I was, my plan was to come over to Tower right away. And, you know, the thing is Fortune Bay was very good to me for a long time too. And I did not want to leave them hanging, I would say, uh, coming back from COVID. So unfortunately, I was trying to operate our business with our general manager who was newer at the time through the process. But also, you know, I had 10 managers and multiple directors underneath me at Fortune Bay. And we didn't know what was going to happen and coming back. And so like, that was really challenging that year over there. And so I'm really happy that I was able to transition when I did. And I wish I could have done it a year prior, but I still think it was probably the right thing to do, even though it wasn't necessarily as enjoyable at the time, because we didn't know what we were doing at either spot, to be honest with you, and especially the hospitality industry too. And then manufacturing, like, yeah, super, a lot of challenges. But yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't know that I wanted to do that on the back end until we really got the business going. Kind of like I said, the five year thing before, like once I started seeing the, you know, people sauna, like this is great, the furnace, all these positive feedback and finally being able to share that, like that definitely, you know, changed my mind. And then being able to do it in tower though too, underneath my circumstances where I was able to create the culture myself, you know what I mean? Like the employees and the choosing how I want to run it. I wouldn't do it if it wasn't like that. Like there's no way, yeah. In 2019, when yep. you decided to build the facility, yep. What was the pushing point for that? Well, it was really, it, it, they knew my dad was going to sell the IRRB, you know, like Steve Peterson from the IRRR knew he had one of our stoves. He knew that my dad couldn't keep doing this and wasn't going to keep doing this. And they wanted to keep this thing in tower, mm -hmm. which hindsight 2020, it was a pretty good idea to do that. And so like the way that it was structured for us to get a facility that was built to the way we wanted it to operate out of, you know, but you know, and so a lot of it comes back to the community. Like the community is very supportive of this thing. You know, the employees are very supportive and the family. So when you kind of have those three things working together, I think you kind of need that to do those kind of development. And, and you know, like in our town, trust is a big thing. Like you just can't come in from out of town and start doing this thing, you're going to do that. But when you've seen like the way our family operated for so long, like that's, you know, stuff that put it in this direction. I, I can just plug your company. My father bought one of the first furnaces from your father. Oh, Thank really? you. Yeah. Back in 1979. <laughs> See, that's right it when was it was, too. So yes. So cutting edge yeah. Of the day. It was. Uh, yeah. He had water connected to it. So water coil. our hot water yeah. for us. I mean, this was just like unheard of. Yeah. Anybody, <laughs> yeah. And that stove is still in use today. And, wow. on, and honestly, it's that's really, I, I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill had said the same thing. He told me right away. He's like, I got one of your stoves. I love a Kuma sound stove. So we, yeah. his company that he had said before. And so, but what one thing I really saw now when the Ukraine war and everything and energy prices really jumped last year is a lot of people that maybe quit burning wood before for a while. They started recycling. All of a sudden, I'm seeing these things from like the early 80s. They're like, yeah, you think this will still work? I'm like, well, if there's a hole in it, like I'm more than likely it'll still work, you know? And so like we've helped, re let's say, refurbish and re get people burning products that were, you know, 40 years old again and so it's like seeing 20 of those in our local area you know what i mean it's pretty cool within a month you know you know within you know 60 days or so last year going into heating season so any other questions and is that a thing you recycling well i would say no i mean i will say like 
it's not great for us to be doing now, right? Just from a time perspective, because it is, it depends what's wrong with it. Like, hey, we, if it's minimal, like we can fix, like we like to help people out. That's one of our things locally. Like we do a lot of that fixing up for people, but from a manufacturing perspective, it's not ideal right now just because like, hey, we are time consumed. <laughs> a lot of time goes into that stuff and we don't know how long some of that's gonna take when we get into it. We actually had a guy bring a boiler over there the other day just for us to look at him. We're like, we wanna help people out with those things, but we can't get into open-ended projects where we don't know the, what the end result is gonna be financially. It's like, I got too many moles to feed over there right now and employees to take care of that. Sometimes saying no is better for everyone involved than you know getting into something like that. But we will provide so much assistance though. Like, Dale, who does, you know, we do everything factory direct from a furnace perspective too. Like he's dealing with people out on the East Coast probably right now as we speak on the telephone and helping them walk through installation and stuff. Like we don't have the dealer's network out there. So we've had to learn how to do that all ourselves. And so we've created videos on the back end with Jake's help, <laughs> who does a fantastic job, you know, partnering and that, that stuff locally where, you know, he was the director of marketing at Fortune Bay. I had a good relationship with him. We work together an afternoon every week. And so that's the kind of things that smaller businesses can do rather than having a full-time marketing person over there. And it's allowed us to create these videos and the structure that can help people do the installs themselves with guidance from us. And so that's really been key for us to get out there as much as we have the last couple of years. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time, everybody. And uh, you're now free to go to the next session. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing.